Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com. Happy Sunday everybody and welcome to my kitchen. I'm excited to be here and I hope you are too. Today we have a mystery recipe. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is I've been traveling all week, I haven't been to the grocery store, and I'm hungry. Have you guys ever felt like that? I do. And instead of running out to a restaurant or fast food, I'm looking in my pantry for ingredients that I already have at home and that I can make a delicious meal. And I thought it would be fun to share a little of my chaos with you today. So welcome. As you join me, please say hello. Let me know where you're from. And we're going to take just a couple of minutes to make sure our technology is all hooked up and connected. We should be live on Facebook and on YouTube as well. So wherever you're joining us from, say hello and join in the fun. Hi, Trelva. Hi, Chris. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's make sure we are live. Are we live on YouTube? Yeah. We are? Okay. I'm not. Hello, oh, yes, we are. Enjoy. We are. And audio seems to be good. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Amy. Amy is from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group here on Facebook. So welcome to Amy. Oftentimes, we have many of her moderators as well. Welcome to you all and to all my top fans and all of you that join in week after week. I'm excited to be here. I'm grateful to have you be here. So thank you so much. Give this video a thumbs up, give it a heart, give it some love. And if you have shared this video onto your own timeline or into a group, big hugs from me to you. It helps so much. It lets Facebook know this is great content and others might wanna watch it too. Hi, Michelle. Michelle's from Brentwood, California. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so today i need your help so those of you that are on i need your help this is a voting thing and i need your comments are you ready everybody listening so this whole idea came up because i've been traveling i got home late last night i'm exhausted and we have a live and i didn't know what to do so i posted that we're going to do a mystery which means that i was going to look at all the ingredients i have in my cupboards and in my fridge or in my freezer and what can i make with the ingredients i already have at home because of course here at Devour Dinner, we focus on easy to make recipes for busy families using common ingredients. And I wanted to address that, right? I wanted to do something that hit all the bases, right? So a nice, easy recipe. So we've got a couple of ideas that we can do today. We're gonna to use both the Instant Pot and the air fryer, but what do you guys wanna see? So recipe combination number one. We're going to do sloppy joes, and I'm going to turn those sloppy joes into like a French bread sloppy joe with melted cheese all over on top. We're gonna to melt it in the air fryer. We're gonna cook up the sloppy joe mix in the Instant Pot. So that's idea number one, doing the, the sloppy joe. Idea number two would be that we're going to make um, like a Dorito taco salad. So that is kind of a cold taco salad with Dorito chips with bell peppers and, and the like. And then I'll make air fryer cornbread. So you tell me what, which way we wanna go today. I've got the ingredients mostly out for both of them. Um, I've got helpers in the wings to grab some of the extra ingredients should you guys change things up on me. Peggy says sloppy joes sound yummy. That's kind of what I thought. Um, I like the idea of doing sloppy joes on um, French bread with cheese all over the top. Okay, so idea number one from Kathy. Chris says Sloppy Joe's. Susan says number one. Natalie says Sloppy Joe's. Okay, listen, the masses are speaking. Sloppy Joe's. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six votes so far for Sloppy Joe's. We're gonna give it another minute because I know there's a little bit of a lag sometimes in all of this. Um, both recipes call for ground beef, so we will be heating up our pressure cooker to saute, which I've already started to heat up the pressure cooker, and it's now reading hot. I'm going to turn this off for just a second while we wait for some more comments to come in. Peggy says, I put pimento cheese on my Sloppy Joes. Ooh, that's a fun idea. All right, any more votes? So the votes are, vote number one is Sloppy Joe's on French bread 
melted cheese on top. Idea two is Dorito taco salad with air fryer cornbread. Oh, there's some more votes. Kathy says Sloppy Joe's. Karen says, okay, you guys are hands down Sloppy Joe's. That's what we're doing. Hands down. All right. This is all ready to go. So we're going to get our Instant Pot in here. We're heating it up. We're pressing saute. So we're getting it going. All right. It's now reading hot. And I'm going to put in the ground beef. Now this is a 90-10 ground beef. I know you guys are yelling at me at home that says, Put on the camera. Do we have it there? So I am just breaking up the ground beef. We're just, and I'm going to add to it some onions because I want the onions to saute down with the ground beef at the same time. While we chop all this up. Now you could have added a little bit of olive oil. I feel like the ground beef does have some natural fats that are gonna come out along with the, the onion that I think we're gonna be okay, we'll see. Now as you can tell, the bottom of the Instant Pot was hot, right? We heated it up, the front panel red hot. And, um, as we put in that cold meat, it instantly cooled off. And so when we use the saute feature on the Instant Pot, it doesn't keep an even temperature like it would on your stovetop. It gears up, it gets hot, it cools down. And it's constantly in this up and down state. So keep that in mind when you are cooking. We're just gonna let it do its thing here for a minute. And I'm just gonna break this meat up. Now, as some of these juices get released from the onions and the fat comes out from the hamburger, I'm gonna use those juices and I'm gonna start to scrape the bottom because look, we already have stuff stuck to the bottom. We don't want that to burn, but as those juices come out, I can use those juices and get up some of this, which will save me later when we deglaze the bottom of the pot. All right, now, while that's doing that, let me drop the recipe for you. Here we go. So here is a link to the Sloppy Joe's recipe. You can pull up a separate tab if you're on your desktop computer or your laptop. Um, if not, you've got the link for later. Um, you can follow right along while we get this going. Because I didn't know which recipe we were going to do, I didn't familiarize myself and remind myself of all the details. Karen says, I add a quarter cup of water when I start. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that would totally work. Hi, Karen. Karen's from Bakersfield. Kathy says, I love the Sloppy Joes. You guys are great. How was your week? How was, okay, is anybody watching? Did you watch the eclipse? Were you located where you could see the complete totality, the complete darkness? What did you experience? I want to hear. Let's chat. This last week, I was able to travel. Um, I got to see my brother and my sister got to celebrate one of the nephews this last week so that was a lot of fun I enjoyed that um, I am traveling again so while I'm speaking of it I am I'm leaving again um, next week I'm not sure if I'm gonna be back for Sunday so right now we're not doing a live next Sunday if something changes and I post that there's a live then there will be a live um, but right now I'm not sure I'm going to be back. With as much as I've been traveling this, what is it, the rest of winter and early spring, I'm, I'm worried to see what my summer is going to look like. It might be a pretty fun summer. All right. So this hamburger, it's hard to see down in the pot. But 
The hamburger, most of the pink is gone. It's all broken up. And I am scraping the bottom, making sure we have nothing that's stuck because we don't want any stuck problems, right? To deglaze the bottom of the pot, you can add some thin liquid. Um, we're going to be adding a little bit of water to the pot. We're just scraping and lifting everything up. I think we've got everything. The rest of the hamburger will cook while it's pressure cooking. So that's important to remember. Natalie says, my first time experiencing an eclipse, it's something I will never forget. Um, it was amazing to see the day turn to night. Absolutely. We had complete totality five years ago, six years ago when the eclipse happened um, here where I live in Eastern Idaho. And it was the coolest experience coolest experience um i wished i had left and gone on a trip so i could see the totality because that's just epic so in 20 years is it 20 years that it's coming back i'm definitely flying somewhere to see it i think that would be so fun all right we're gonna cancel that and i'm gonna pull up my recipe so that I don't mess this up, right? Because that there's a strong possibility with all these recipes in my head, I'm gonna confuse them, you guys. So keep me, keep me going on the right thing. Okay, we're gonna add salt, pepper, chili powder right to the top, okay? We're gonna start seasoning this up. So we're gonna add some pepper. I am using Actually, you know what we can add because I have here? I'm gonna add some, some minced garlic. I got that out for the other recipe, but I really like garlic, the flavor it adds. So we're gonna add it, stir that up. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of, let's see, where is it at? Chili powder, oh, one teaspoon of chili powder. So I'm just gonna shake it till we get about one teaspoon. It's funny, when you shake and it just gets the light coating on the top, it looks like a lot more than it really is than if you were to measure it out. I've learned that with all of my cooking. And we're gonna add a little bit of salt because I just don't think it needs a ton. And if we need more salt, I'll add it later. Then we're also going to add we're gonna add some other things here. Got my can opener. So we're gonna add some diced green chilies. So it's a four ounce can of diced green chilies. Now this is the fun part. What heat level do you enjoy your food? Do you like it spicy hot? Do you like it mild, medium? What do you like? Because you want to choose chilies, diced green chilies, that are in the temperature that you enjoy. Now, I enjoy mild. It's just what I like. I like flavor, not necessarily the heat. So keep that in mind on what you choose. We like to spice it up for those who like the heat. They use like um, hot sauce. We're also going to add in some diced tomatoes. Now, the diced tomatoes have juices, right? So it's important, we wanna get some of those juices in with our diced tomatoes. We're gonna to add about that much. We're just gonna leave it be. Then we're gonna add, let's see here. We're gonna add our Worcestershire sauce. So we have two tablespoons of Worcestershire, one tablespoon of vinegar, we're gonna add that. We're gonna add some mustard, some ketchup, and some barbecue sauce. Now, here's where substitutions come into play. I didn't have any Dijon mustard or spicy brown mustard. I only had yellow mustard, which is really quite interesting. I'm actually wondering if my son, who lives semi-local, has come and taken it. 
because we always have it and we're totally out of both. So we're gonna use some yellow because that's what I have. Remember, when you're trying to cook from home and you're looking in your cupboard on what do you have, make substitutions, make adjustments, okay? You're gonna be just fine. Then we're gonna use some barbecue sauce and for this recipe, it's about a half a cup and we're gonna use about a half of a cup of both barbecue sauce and ketchup. Now you notice I'm kind of layering all of this in. I'm not stirring it up. I'm just kind of plopping it on top. I know you know some of you know this answer. I know you do. But for those of you who don't, do you have any guesses as to why? I'm curious. Peggy says mild for me. Karen says mild. Michelle says mild. Mild, mild. Um, Karen is asking, what does the vinegar do? The vinegar helps give that tang to it. So if you think of a sloppy joe, a sloppy joe is going to be a little bit sweet, right? We're also going to add in some brown sugar as well. And so we want the sweetness, but we want the tang as well. And so we're going off of both. That's a good question. That's a great question. All right, I'm putting two tablespoons of brown sugar right on top. If you don't want the sweet, leave the brown sugar out. It's okay. Everyone's saying they like mild. Mild, mild, mild. Okay. Let me make sure we've got all of these ingredients in. Okay, the last thing that we need to put in is a half of a cup of water. Now we have the juices from the tomato, the diced tomatoes. We have some juices from the diced green chili, but both of those are just a little bit. We have a little bit of juices left over from the onions and the hamburger. We're gonna add a half of a cup of water. And I'm pouring this around the edge, if you notice. The reason being is I don't want it to mix with the barbecue sauce and the ketchup. I just wanna leave that be. Fair enough? All right, and as always, check your seal. Make sure that your seal is sitting down in the groove and it's seated correctly, super important. And then we're gonna put our lid on, we're gonna close it, and we're gonna lock the pressure valve. This is going to cook, I believe it cooks for five minutes. Yep, close the lid. We're gonna pressure cook for five minutes. Use your plus and minus keys to adjust the setting. There we go, use your plus and minus. So the front is gonna read five minutes and then it's gonna beep. The beeping is letting us know that your pressure cooker has accepted those readings and it's gonna start pressuring up. It's gonna heat that bottom element and it's gonna bring all that thin liquid to a boil. So our thin liquid is our water, the juices from the tomatoes, the juices from the green chilies, and it's gonna bring all of that to a boil. As that comes to a boil, it's going to create steam. Steam creates pressure, and pressure will seal off our pressure cooker lid, and that pin in the back is going to pop up. At which point, it will recognize it's all pressured up, and this front panel is gonna change from reading on to whatever time you put in. So in this case, we put in five minutes. Then those five minutes are gonna count down as it cooks. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. It will beep at us, letting us know the pressure cycle has complete. For this recipe, we're going to allow a 10 minute natural pressure release. So what does that mean? That means we're just gonna let our pressure cooker sit for 10 minutes. Now this front dial, once it reads zero and it beeps, letting us know the cook cycle has completed, it will start counting up in numbers. And as we watch it go up, when it gets to 10, we will then release the remaining pressure. And the remaining pressure will be released in what's called a quick release. Super easy, super simple, okay? Now, can this recipe be made with ground turkey or ground chicken? Yes, it can, absolutely. Um, can you, oh, you know what? Hold on, we might have forgotten something. Are you guys yelling at me like we forgot something? Because I feel like we did. Yeah, no, hold on. The bell peppers. We need to throw the bell peppers in. 
guys, I just saw them here. They're all diced up. This is my favorite part because these meld in and all the flavors. So we're gonna sprinkle these on top. So I have diced bell pepper. I've got red, I've got orange, I've got yellow. And I really do have bell peppers in my, my kitchen because I like to use bell peppers for um, making like scrambled eggs and those kind of things. Okay, so now we're gonna have to start this again. So I'm gonna clear it out because I made a mistake. So we're, we're telling the pressure cooker we're starting all over, right? We're gonna press cancel. Pressure cook, five minutes. We don't wanna confuse it. We wanna make sure it knows what's going on. So it's gonna beep at us again and it's gonna tell us we're reading. There we go and it's gonna start all over again. I believe I've got everything else that was supposed to be in, is in. Fingers crossed, right? Kathy says, did your plug come undone? Yes, it sure did. <laughs> Michelle says, look like it's off. You guys are great, you guys keep me going. Michelle says, my Sloppy Joe's seem boring. Only hamburger, onion, seasoned salt, ketchup, um, and cream of tomato soup. I've never used cream of tomato soup. That'd be interesting. I think it'd be good. I like to add a lot of flavor. And I feel like the onions, the bell peppers, the chilies all help to add flavor. I like the diced tomatoes because even though diced tomatoes in a can are really tender, right? You can smash them with a fork. They will cook and simmer down in here, but they still will give some texture to the overall Sloppy Joe mix. And of course, this Sloppy Joe mix freezes very well, so you can um, eat whatever portion you wanna eat and freeze the other for later, which obviously this is what we'll do um, because that's what works. Oh, I'm gonna clean up my little mess Open up my counter. We're gonna move this off to the side. We're gonna let it do its thing. And we're gonna chat. Because our air fryer that we're gonna do will be for when this comes out. Hi, Debbie. Debbie says, new peeps. Um, I see. So Debbie says, new peeps, you could only open it like that because it hadn't come to pressure yet. That is great. Okay. So let me explain. If you're watching and you're like, wait, what just happened? I opened my lid and lifted it off. It wasn't up to pressure yet. Okay. Pressure cookers do all come with a safety mechanism. If this had come up to pressure, I would not have been able to open the lid. When that pin in the back comes up, it locks the lid in place and that's a safety mechanism. And that's why to open the lid, we need that pin to drop. We need the pressure to release and the pressure to go. So Debbie, thank you. I was only able to do that because we had just barely started the process of heating that bottom element and bringing the thin liquid to a boil and it hadn't pressured yet. So I was able to open it, throw in the ingredients I missed and continue on. That's a great point. Hey, Mary, how are you? So, Mary, I am currently making, I'll drop the link again, Instant Pot Sloppy Joes, but for those of you at home, you can always serve it over hamburger buns. You could so serve it over regular bread if that's what you have, sourdough, or just serve it like it is and, and pour it over cornbread. Actually, that would have been really good. Ooh, but today I'm going to, use some French bread. So I have some leftover French bread and we're gonna use our French bread and we're gonna pour the sloppy joe on it with cheese and I'm gonna pop it into the air fryer and melt the cheese on top and it's gonna be delicious, like so good. So here's the question for you. Do we first want to toast the bread? Do we wanna pop it in the air fryer and let it get a little toasty so it kind of forms a little bit of that toasty golden brown inside? Do we wanna do that first? Or do we just wanna leave the bread nice and soft so that all the sloppy joe mix can just ooze down and soak into the bread? That's what I wanna know.
You guys are so fun. Okay, I need all of your help. All of you that are on, you guys are my steady Freddies for the most part. Listen, I need your help on Facebook. I need engagement on posts on my Facebook page. I need likes and I need comments. If you would mind, please, when you see them throughout the week, you don't have to go out of your way, but when you see them, will you please comment on them? It would really make a difference. Right now, I'm in a lull on Facebook and the algorithm is not being nice to me and my posts are not going out very far. I need you to engage on the posts, like and comment for me. If you guys would do that this week, I'd be so grateful, so grateful. Bonnie says no to toasting the bread. Bonnie is on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome, Bonnie. Okay, no toasting the bread. We've got one vote for no. Natalie says I prefer it soft. Michelle says toasty. Karen says yes. Which were you saying yes to? That's the question. We could actually do it both ways. Because my French bread is cut in half. So I could toast one side and I could leave the other toast open, the other side open. We could do it both ways because they should both fit. Oh yeah. We could totally do it both ways if you guys want. That'd be easy. Karen says, yes, toast the bread. <laughs> it will get soggy too quick if you don't. Brene says, no toasting the bread. Peggy says, Facebook hides people's pages if you don't engage. Liking and commenting keeps it in your feed more. Yes, Peggy, so true. Um, and, and Facebook sometimes pulls people out of the feeds just to see if people will go looking for them. And that's where I'm at right now. I need you guys to look for Devour Dinner's Facebook page and go engage, go like on them, go talk on them, make comments on them, ask questions. Anything you can come up with would make a huge difference on the page. All right, we're kind of split, but the funniest one to me is Bill makes the comment, toast the bread. And of course, Bill's going to be eating it. So we're gonna toast one half of it and we're gonna leave one half of it open. Does that sound good? That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna turn this on, we're gonna put this in, and I'm not even gonna put butter on it. We're just gonna let it get a little toasted. But you could put some butter on it. Um, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put the air fryer at like 325, and because I'm gonna talk and not pay attention, I'm gonna do three minutes, and we're just gonna let it do its thing. Barbara says, lightly toast. Renee says, this would be good on garlic toast too. Okay, Renee, I almost pulled out of my freezer um, garlic Texas toast because I think it would be great on garlic Texas toast, but you would definitely need to toast it so it's nice and crispy before putting it on. But I, I very much agree. So we're gonna do that. Do we have any newcomers today? Any newcomers? <laughs> Natalie, what make of air fryer do you have? Natalie, so I use a Kasori. Um, I have the original Kasori, I think it's a Pro 2. Um, it's the 5.8 quart Kasori air fryer. Love it. I think it's great. Um, I recently just got a new air fryer, which is right here. Testing it out. Haven't used it a bunch, trying it out. How's that? <laughs> Michelle says, is that the new turbo air fryer? It is, it is, it is. Yes, and do you guys hear how quiet it is? It is so quiet. Um, I have not had it very long, like, what, a week and a half? 
and I've been gone a lot of it, so I have not tested a ton in it yet. Karen says, everybody needs to publicly share it so it reaches more people. Karen, I agree, but I know a lot of people are funny and don't want to share it on their feed, and I totally understand that. So if you, if you don't mind sharing some of my posts on your feed, thank you, thank you. That helps me a ton. But the likes and the comments also do amazing things. Hi, Karen. Karen says, I'm new. Welcome. So Karen, I'm Rebecca from Devour Dinner, where I focus on easy to make recipes for busy families using common ingredients. And if you just joined in, we're making sloppy joes in the Instant Pot. And we're going to turn those sloppy joes into kind of a French bread, toasted, yummy deliciousness topped with cheese. So right now we are waiting with our pressure cooker doing its thing. And we put the bread in the air fryer for, I think, three minutes. I don't remember. See, I told you guys I'd forget. And we now have 10 seconds left. So we're going to check on it, see if it's toasty or not. The vote was some people wanted it on toasted bread and some people did not. Oh, okay. I'm going to show this to you because we can, right? We got this top down. I want you guys to see. Okay. So for three minutes, I did this at 325. You'll notice around the edge here, we're starting to get a little golden. The rest of this is definitely starting to be crispy, but not necessarily golden. I'm liking that though. I don't want to do it any more than that. So we're just going to leave it like that and I'm just going to leave it here in the air fryer. Karen says I made your meatloaf with the stuffing mix. Awesome meatloaf made great sandwiches the next day. Yay. I love that Karen. That recipe. That's what I've made from when my kids were little, little, little. And if you don't know, none of my kids even live at home anymore. I'm an empty nester. Um, it's so easy to make and it has such great flavor and it does make great sandwiches the next day. It's also kind of fun to take those slices and just fry them up a little bit so they get kind of toasty on the edges um, before you put them in a sandwich. It's delicious. I'm working on an air fryer version of that recipe to put all the details in a post for all of you who have been asking as well so that we'll have the same recipe, but all the details in its own separate post talking about the air fryer and why the air fryer and all those things. Super fun. All right, what other questions do you guys have? What else is going on? You guys want to update on the shoulder? You notice I'm moving my shoulder, but it's really slow. Um, we're making improvements. We've improved um, from physical therapy. I started with a one pound weight, which is basically like a can of soup. Um, I've now progressed to a two pound weight um, in my exercises. I still don't have a lot of this rotation yet. Um, I'm doing a little bit better on the reaching, but I can't reach and grab and lift. I don't have, I can't lift things from out here yet. So although I can hold two pounds close to my body, I can't hold two pounds away from my body. Kind of crazy. Let's see, any more chitter chatter today? Let's talk about, I haven't talked about this in a while, um, protein. You guys, I love my protein. I still take it every single day. So I enjoy Clean Simple Eats protein. It is gluten-free. It is easy to digest on your stomach. It does not taste gritty. It fills me up. I have it every morning. I make a protein shake and it's helped curb my appetite, allowing me to lose weight, which has been phenomenal. So over the last two years, I've lost over 50 pounds. Um, from my surgery, I have gained a little bit. That's totally normal with my body and all my health things. Um, and we're getting that flushing off now. It's starting to come down again, which I'm thrilled with. Um, and so that's fun. Do I have recent pics of my littles? Well, I don't know. I, let's see what I've got here. Oh, that's not it. I've got a lot of little things that pop up 
and I closed that one. No, no. I don't have recent ones on here, but, but here's the thing. I'm going to see them this week. So I will have new pictures soon. New pictures soon. How's that? Okay, what did I do with my chat box now? Now I'm in trouble, you guys. Oh, there it is. The littles are growing up. Little Miss um, is three and a half and little honey bear will be two coming up in June. So she is just trying so hard to be like her big sister. It's pretty cute. Totally cute. Okay, do you guys hear the beep? That was our sloppy joe. Um, it is now pressure cooked for five minutes and we are now what's called a natural pressure release. So that time counted down from five to zero, it is now beeped and now it's counting up in numbers. So we'll pay attention to what it's showing and we're gonna let it natural pressure release. So sometimes I have people say, why don't we just release the pressure? Why do we let it naturally, naturally release? Typically when you're doing chicken or steak or roast, you want to let it naturally release the pressure 100% because then it keeps the moisture inside of the meat. In this recipe with Sloppy Joe's, all of everything is cooked at this point. And of course the hamburger is ground up, so it's little pieces. And there's a lot of liquid in there. So why are we letting it naturally release? Does anybody have any ideas as to why? I'll give you the answer. But I just want to see if you guys know. The reason we let it naturally release for a few minutes is because it's kind of in a simmer state. The reason we use pressure cookers is to speed up time, right? But if you remember back in the day, maybe your parents, maybe your grandparents, whatever it may be, everything was done on the stove or maybe in a crock pot on a slow simmer and it would simmer for hours and hours and hours. And all of the flavors of every ingredient put inside would meld together, giving it a lot of dimension and levels of flavors, right? Well, in our pressure cooker, that is now happening in the same sort of way, but in a fraction of the time. Because it is still under pressure, and it's kind of in that slow simmer state, everything is melding together. If we were to cook this up on the stove top, throw all the ingredients in and it's like, Oh, it's hot. It's bubbling. It's done. Here you go. The flavor profile would be fine, but not as good as if it's slow simmered for hours on the stove. Same with the pressure cooker. We want those flavors to really meld together, to bind together and produce that really delicious, yummy flavor profile that we're looking for. You guys are quiet today. What are their questions? Help me out. What else can we talk about? I've told you about my protein. Right now I'm on a kick of the mint. I'm loving the mint. I'm just about ready to pull out my Ninja Creamy to start making the protein ice creams again for the spring and summertime because I love a good ice cream and I've loved the Ninja Creamy to make protein ice cream because you cannot tell the difference. And I feel like I'm cheating when I'm really not. So that's kind of fun too. Super fun. Kathy's guess on why we let it do a natural pressure release. Kathy said, so it doesn't spit. Yes and no. In this, so when we're cooking pasta and pasta has a lot of starches, there's a lot that goes on towards the top of our pressure cooker, which, which will allow it to spit. This, our liquids are really down low and we don't have starches going on. So it probably would not spit if we immediately opened up that pressure. Michelle's like, where did you travel last week? Last week I was down in Utah. I just got back from Utah. I got to see my brother and my sister, um, and some of the nieces and nephews and, um, we got to celebrate my nephew who, um, graduated. So that was kind of fun. Karen says to mix the flavors. That's right. It's to mix those flavors together. 
Karen says, I love your show. I'm almost 81. Karen, you're so cute. I'm almost 81 and I'm still learning new things. You know what, Karen? Big hugs to you. Big hugs. I think, I think it's fun to learn new things. I really do. Um, I went back to college later in life. I graduated, um, went back to school to get a bachelor's uh, about 10 years ago. But I went back. Karen says, I love the quick cooking. I love quick cooking too. Okay, so I have this trip coming up this next week. I'll be going and seeing the Littles, which is pretty fun. And I'm going to see some other family members. And then I've got another trip the first part of May. And then hopefully things slow down a little bit. Hopefully things slow down. But we'll talk more about that when we get closer to it. All right. This has been naturally releasing for six minutes. We're still going to let it do its thing. The air fryer has our bread inside of it. Just doing its thing. Um, I am actually, let's see here. Oh, good. All right, you guys, you want to know something funny? Um, we took a bet today, my husband and I, on how many things I would forget. Because doing a live like this where you've got multiple recipes that you can do, you're bound to forget something. And so far, knock on wood, I have not forgotten anything. I'm so proud of myself. So proud of myself. Kathy says, we are air frying chicken drumsticks for supper. Yum. Oh, that's delicious. I have loved, loved the air fryer. Um, and I've really been branching out and learning how to use the air fryer in so many different ways. Um, lately we've been doing like a lot of sheet pan recipes that you would normally just pop in your oven that have a variety of ingredients, but are like sheet pan meals. And I've been doing them in the air fryer. So quick, so, so easy and so perfect for two. Um, last week we talked, um, so many of you are wanting smaller portion size recipes. So I've been testing some things out, seeing what I can come up with for you, which is kind of fun. Almost there. Let me get this cutting board out. I don't know if it's going to be easier to do right in the air fryer. I bet it's going to be easier to put this together right inside of the air fryer basket. We might do that. That might be the best. Mary says, will I be able to pick up my littles? No, I will not. I am not able to pick them up. Um, if I'm sitting on a couch, they can climb up on me and I can, you know, do anything with this hand. This arm is not strong enough. And especially the baby, she doesn't understand. And so I purposely don't put myself in situations where I would need to like catch her because I don't have the strength to do that. Um, which is sad. So I don't hold their little finger with this hand because if they trip and fell, they would pull on my shoulder. So we don't do that. It'll be some time before I can pick them up. I'm hoping by the end of the year, I'll be able to pick them up. Karen says, I use my counter toaster air frying every day. Such a convenient appliance. Absolutely it is. Absolutely. All right. We're going to let the rest of the pressure out. Now that we've let it release pressure for the last 10 minutes, there's not as much pressure left at this point. And, um, and we're just going to let it release. It'll take a minute or two. Then we're going to open up the pressure cooker. We're going to stir everything together because we will still see some of the barbecue sauce on top. Um, it won't have all mixed in. Peggy says, that would be great. Most recipes make too much for me. It's just me at home. Absolutely, Peggy. Absolutely. I do like leftovers, but I don't, I like one day of leftover. I don't want two and three days of leftovers. That's how I am. I like to cook once and get a couple of meals out of it, um, or at least get a, a small lunch out of it. Sometimes some recipes aren't that way. So... That's what I like. Okay, as soon as this is opened up, we're gonna 
stir it. And I'll put on the top down camera so you might be able to see a little bit inside. See where we're at. And then as a reminder, next week, I should still be out of town, so I am not planning a, a live recipe demo next Sunday, which would be the 21st. I think that would be the 21st. Um, yes, the 21st. But then I will be back the 28th. Shoulder, uh, Karen is asking, did I have my shoulder replaced? Not a full replacement, but a total reconstruction. So I had a torn bicep, torn labrum, arthritis, bursitis, um, bicep reattachment. Um, we had to cut part of the bone in my collarbone to open up the AC joint. We did lots of stuff. So we tacked everything, we put it back in place, we supported it better, cleaned it all up. And it really does feel better. Um, other than the natural healing process. Peggy says, I don't mind having a little leftovers I can bring um, for lunch at work. I agree. I like having a little bit of leftovers. I think that's great. All right. This is open. Oh my gosh, you guys. This smells beautiful. We're gonna move the lid out of the way just because. Now, sloppy joes are meant to be sloppy, right? This is a little sloppy. If it's a little sloppy like this, and when I say sloppy, this is really, really sloppy. This will thicken as it cools, but of course you wanna eat it hot. You can turn the saute on to help cook out some of that extra liquid. Because in this recipe, the recipe calls for a pound and a half of hamburger. I only used a pound today, um, but yet I kept the other ingredients the same. So we're a little more sloppy than we really want it to be. But the easiest way to work with that is when you're ladling it out, right? So let me come up here so you can see what we got going on here. There's a lot of liquid. Just drain off some of that liquid so it is not so sloppy. Does that make sense? Okay. We're going to put this off to the side. And we're going to pull out the air fryer basket. Now, if you're just joining us, we have this piece of French bread that has been toasted and this that has not because of you viewers at home and your choice in your preference. It's the only reason. We're just gonna test it out. So I'm just gonna load this up. And let me tell you, this smells amazing. Absolutely amazing. You can see the chunks of tomato. You can see the green chilies, which I love. And of course, all of the bell peppers. Of course, everything is all cooked down. But it smells so good. And I'm going to load this up and then we're going to top it with cheese. There we go. We're going to try to even it out a little bit. And we're going to put cheese on top. Now you could do sliced cheese. I didn't have sliced cheese today. I just had pre-grated cheese. So that's what we're going to do. And you want to try to get it on top. I have a feeling that this is going to blow a little bit of this cheese away. So my remedy for this is I'm going to kind of push it down into
Like I want that cheese to kind of stick into the sloppy joe mixture. Sound good? Okay, that's what it looks like. We're gonna pop it in the air fryer and I'm gonna do um, we're going to do 325 again. Oh, what just happened? Nope, nope. Air fry. So this new Turbo Blaze, you have all these different settings you can do. Um, you can air fry, you can roast, you can broil. There's just so much you can do with it. And it has, it's preset. So each of those settings have a preset feature to it. Just kind of cool. All right, we're gonna let that go for a few minutes and I'm gonna check in on it to see how it's doing. Again, do you hear how quiet it is? You can hardly hear it. Hardly hear it. Mary says, I like to have leftovers to freeze. Renee says that extra juice would be great to make soup with. It would. It might be a little sweet because remember we've got ketchup and barbecue sauce in there um, as well. I think for the rest of it, I'm just going to turn it on saute and just let it. evaporate out some of that liquid and it'll thicken right up. Not too worried about it. It'll do its thing. We're just going to melt that cheese. We're going to pull it out. All right, I did forget something unless I have it in my drawer. Um, I can make it work. A knife to cut it. Bill's laughing at me over here. Pretty fun. All right, when I come back, do you guys have any suggestions on what you'd like to see for recipes? Let me know. Let's chat about it. Let's plan for it. I'm here for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna just take a look at this. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, it's only been in there two minutes. They're in it 325 for two minutes and the cheese is all melty. We're gonna do it for just a little longer because I wanna see if it'll get toasty. I like my cheese a little toasty. Not just melty, but a little toasty. Kathy says chicken nuggets. Natalie says more air fryer stuff. More air fryer stuff is definitely coming. It's definitely coming. Um, so no worries about that. Um, a lot of my recipes, I'm working on providing the air fryer recipes for them because I think that's important. Um, so that you have the option of making it in the instant pot or the air fryer when possible or whatever. So you're going to see more of that. Spanish rice, says Renee. Okay, Kathy, when you say chicken nuggets, tell me what kind of chicken nuggets. Are you talking like homemade chicken nuggets? Are you talking about just like frozen chicken nuggets? What are you talking about? Let me hear. Okay, look at this, you guys. Oh, this is amazing. Look at it. Let's see how high I can get it up there. Boop. What do you think? Is that beautiful? It's so pretty. So pretty. All right, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna put it on my cutting board. And we're going to slice it up. Okay. 
We've got our Sloppy Joe mix over here. I'm just simmering away, just trying to evaporate some of that extra liquid. This is beautiful. It smells so good. All right, we're gonna cut this. You guys, this is beautiful. And it's warm, it's warm, but it's not horrible to kind of hold on to down at the bottom of the bread. But it is definitely, it's, it's, it's hot, but it's not so bad that I can't hold on to it. I want to do a cross section. I've kind of squeezed this a little bit, but I want to cross section this the best that I can. I don't know if you can tell. The bread has held up really nicely, right? This was the toasted bread. So you can see that it has absorbed down in, but it's not making it oopy goopy, if that makes sense. And this is the bottom portion of the French bread. And we did not toast this portion. And this is wider. This has definitely saturated the bread. The bottom of the French bread is still solid. Like you can feel it's crispy, but let's see if I can see that. It is all, all these juices are down in here. I don't think this side of the bread was as thick. Oh, and this is thinning down or thickening up. We like that. All right, I'm gonna plate this up. I do have a plate around here. This is such a fun recipe and such a fun way to serve it. Think if you were having like game nights with friends, you could make these up and you could slice them. They're a little bigger than an appetizer size, but yet they're super nice for a little bit of a hearty meal. I think that's so fun. And I'm gonna lift these up. There we go. Sloppy Joe's on French bread, toasted up in the air fryer. Simple, easy to do, so fun. Should I take a bite? I'm gonna turn this off. Maybe that noise will slow down. Should I take a bite? This is gonna be messy, you guys. It's Sloppy Joe's. I'm going for it. I'm gonna go for the toasted one. Here we go. Mmm. So good. So good. I really love this. This might be a new favorite or a new fun way to serve it. Um, as you can see, I'm able to grab this. So this is the toasted one. So it has a little bit more stability. If I was trying to, let me grab. So this is the bottom that is not toasted. I can still hold it. This is the edge piece though. That was the next slice. I don't know if I can pick up this next slice. Let's try. It's a true sloppy Joe, you guys. I'm going to go for it. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Now I have some opinions. Wow. All right, what's the difference? You know the bread is there in the non-toasted. You know it's there, but it's all absorbed down. It's loaded with the juices. It's absorbed everything in except the crust on the bottom. So you have the texture of the crust on the bottom, but the rest of the bread is all absorbed the juices. So you don't feel like you're eating a ton of bread. 
and the bread we toasted, you definitely knew you had bread. You had the whole concept in your bite. They're both delicious, but they give some different textures, which I do feel like changes it a little bit. So it comes down to preference, whatever you like. They're both fun ways to do it. Peggy says, now I'm hungry. Renee says, I bet your house smells amazing. My, like this recipe smells so good. And I think it's because of all the ingredients in it. The green chilies, the tomatoes, the bell peppers, the onion, the garlic. When those all meld together, it adds such flavor in everything that's going on. Kathy says, that looks so yummy. Oh, Kathy's saying air fryer chicken nuggets with ground chicken. Oh, I've never even made those in the oven. I'm gonna have to look into those. We'll see. Mary says, yum. Karen says, yum. Those look phenomenal, says Renee. Peggy says, ooh, yum. Karen says, chicken cacciatore would be awesome. That would be, that would be fun. Okay, so fun, you guys. This is all super helpful. Remember, please engage with Devour Dinner's Facebook page. Give it some love. It really does help because Facebook has hidden so much of my stuff lately. It is so sad. So sad. Make this recipe. If you make it, leave a comment on the recipe itself. Let others know you made it. Let others know you liked it. If you've made a recipe from previous weeks, go back to that recipe. So like the meatloaf that we did last week or the week before, go back and share your experience so that others know. People do read the comments and it helps them know it's a great recipe. Again, we wanna thank Amy from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group. The support that the Instant Pot for 101, 101 for Beginners gives to me and has for so many years. We're so grateful to all of you that have hopped over from that group. Welcome, I hope you'll come back again. Plan on me in two weeks, so that would be April 28th, same time, same place. We'll do some more fun recipes using the Instant Pot and the air fryer. All right, everybody, have a fantastic week. Stay safe and remember, be kind. All right, we'll see y'all later. Bye.